Namaskar. I am Dr. Murali Manohar. Welcome to Ayurveda Samhita. In this program, you are going to learn about an important topic and some powerful ancient Ayurvedic secrets. These can change your entire life forever. Hyperacidity. Everyone knows that excessive secretion of acid leads to hyperacidity. Inside the stomach, nutrients are broken into small units for the purpose of assimilation. The stomach can digest things similar to its own structure and composition like a piece of meat. But, then how come the stomach does not digest itself? The process of digestion takes place because of many different gastric secretions which are highly acidic. What prevent the stomach from digesting itself are the cells, which form its inner lining. These cells have a special permeability barrier, which does not let anything permeate. If this is challenged with certain foods like too much tea, coffee, alcohol or certain chemical drugs, especially some pain relieving and anti-arthritic drugs, then this will be weakened or damaged. As a result, the highly acidic medium, which prevails in the stomach, traverses the stomach wall, thus causing pain and discomfort. If the same thing is repeated again and again, it may give rise to acidity and gastritis thereby inflaming the lining of the stomach. Ayurveda calls this condition as amalapitta. To understand the disease amalapitta, one has to understand the concept of Agni. Ayurveda has described this, Agni, as fire of life. It has been given a pivotal place in the delicate balance between health and disease. In other words, Agni, is the fire that cooks or digests the food. A normal, Agni, means a healthy person and conversely, an abnormal, Agni, is a sure pointer to disease. At times, this, Agni, may be impaired due to intellectual blasphemy. Prajna Paradha, unwholesome conjunction of sense organs with their objects, Asatmi Endriyarata Samyoga, and vagaries of weather and time. Kala or Parinama, this impaired Ani shows effect on Pitta, the fiery energy of the body responsible for transformation. Amala Pitta, is the byproduct of this defective process. It is difficult to produce fire either without fire logs or with too many fire logs occupying the whole furnace. The same is the case with digestive fire. This will be hampered either with low amounts, madhogni, or with high amounts. Tikshnagni, amalapitta, is the resultant of Tikshnagni, says Ayurveda, guidelines and Ayurvedic remedies. As we know that acidity is due to improper regimen, it can be easily tackled by following simple methods. It is clear that amylod pitta is mainly due to aggravation of pitta. Factors responsible for aggravation of this pitta dasha are excessive intake of pungent and sour food items, alcoholic preparations, salt, hot and sharp stuff which cause burning sensations, anger, fear, excessive exposure to sun and fire, intake of dry vegetables and alkalis, irregularity in taking food, etc. should be avoided as far as possible. As a rule, all persons with acidity can take a milk diet excellently, although some, at first have trouble in absorbing milk. This is because the large amount of acid in the stomach forms hard curds combined with the proteins of the milk. Often these are vomited. Yet milk is excellent in the condition, especially when preceded by a fast, adjusted to your general condition. The milk diet should be adhered to several weeks if possible. Along with this, drink warm water freely. Ayurveda insists on this because, according to it, hot destroys hot. Vishnam Vishnina Hanthi. Moreover, it has been found by physiological experiments that cold water increases the amount of acid secreted in the stomach. When the stomach seems to be in better condition, 
The milk may be taken with an evening meal consisting of easily digestible and non-irritating foods. For a time, it is better to use foods requiring only moderate mastication, since mastication naturally increases the flow of gastric juice with this acid. Yet insufficient mastication of the food chosen will aggravate by causing gastric irritation. So, mastication should always be moderate in this particular condition. It is important not to overeat, but to take small meals, three times a day, avoid artificial stimulants, all of which raise pitta, alcohol, in any form, is like throwing fuel on the pitta fire. The drawback of the caffeine in coffee and tea is that it increases acid production in stomach if consumed excessively. Even an excess intake of sweets can cause acidity as the sugar causes fermentation and produces acid in the stomach, particularly if wrongly combined with other food types. According to Ayurveda, the pre-digestive characters of a particular food need not correlate with its post-digestive effect. It calls this effect as vipaka. Avoid salt, oil, pickles, curd, fried foods, sour foods like tamarind, etc., all of which eat the body. Take pitta pacifying diet. It should contain bitter and astringent tastes, which are usually supplied mainly through salads and legumes. These two tastes curb the appetite, dry up excessive moisture and keep the palate sharp. To bring down aggravated pitta, a standard recommendation is to take two teaspoonfuls of ghee in a glass of warm milk. This also acts as a laxative, which helps flush excess pitta from the system. Ayurveda recommends this luxation, virakana karma, to be the best therapy to correct the aggravated pitta. Have your ghee and milk instead of dinner, or two hours after a very light dinner. You can also have it in place of breakfast. Do not take ghee, however, if you have a problem with high cholesterol. Avipatakara churna relieves all the agonizing symptoms caused by acidity. It moves the bowels and flushes them. It also maintains your appetite. This powder can be taken in a dose of 3 to 6 grams with water before and during the meal. Dried grapes, fruit bark of Herod. Terminalia Chibula, in powdered form and sugar pounded together and taken in 12 grams quantity does relieve acidity. Buttermilk is not found useful in Amala Pitta. Hence, it may be avoided. Cereals from fresh crops should be avoided. Pulses should be moderately used. 2 to 3 years old rice, wheat flour, milk, green leafy vegetables and fruits containing sweet juice are all permitted. Coconut water is exceptionally good is this condition, Sukumara Grudam, is specific for this condition and may be taken in doses of 1 to 2 teaspoonfuls mixed with a cup of milk in the morning. Amla. Amblica officinalis, in powdered form is also helpful, the standard dose is 2 teaspoonfuls 3 times a day. Alternatively, Dothri Luha, calyx of iron mixed with the juice of Amla, may be taken in one teaspoonful dose twice a day. In acidity, iron absorption is impaired and this will be corrected with this medicine. In severe cases, Ayurvedic physicians usually prescribe Swarna Parpati, Leela Villas Ras, Sudha Sikara Ras etc. If needed, these medicines may be taken under medical supervision. A decoction of sandal, chandan, consumed thrice daily, gives good relief from hyperacidity. Kama Dutras, with pearls, is a drug of choice for hyperacidity in the dose of one tablet thrice daily. Ayurvedic treatment plan, please keep in mind that, these are all common home remedies, and first aid measures. If the problem continues, even after using these remedies, then you need to come for a personal examination, and Ayurvedic body type evaluation. In Ayurveda, there are excellent and powerful medicines for this condition. The best suitable drugs are selected basing on your individual body type, and prescribed along with personalized diet, and lifestyle modifications. So, hope you have enjoyed this topic and enlightened.
in the next program we will meet with another interesting and important topic satam jeeva sardo vardhamanah satam hemantan satam vasantan live over 100 years old with excellent health and complete happiness subham டாக்டர் சிறுமாவிள்ள முரளி மனோகர் எம்டி ஆயுர்வேதம் ரக்ஷா ஆயுர்வேதிக் சென்டர் சார்தி ஸ்டுடியோஸ் ரோட் ஆப்போசிட் ஸ்டேட் ஹோம் அமீர்பேட் ஹைதராபாத் செவன்டி த்ரீ ஃபோர் நைன் ஒன் டபுள் செவன் டபுள் ஃபோர் ஃபைவ் ஃபோர் ஃபைவ் ஃபோர்